Hello, Kim Barker here. I am so excited to share with you my summer book pick today. It's called Chief Joy Officer, How Great Leaders Elevate Human Energy and Eliminate Fear by Richard Sheridan. For more inspiring, life-changing book reviews, please click on the red subscribe button somewhere around here. Recently, I read this book, and I think this book should be required reading for every business leader and every business student in the world. Actually, for anyone who works in an organization. One of the endorsers of this book, Joseph Grenny, describes Richard Sheridan as if Peter Drucker and Mr. Rogers had a baby, LOL. He goes on to say that this book is a perfect blend of irrefutable management theory and irresistible human decency. Sheridan confronts you with an elevated purpose of leadership. Your MBA professors didn't have the guts or the clarity to teach you. Some professors might not, but I try to teach exactly what Dr. Sheridan is teaching. Another endorser, Darren Schumacher said, this book is about nothing less than restoring the soul of your company. He has read dozens of books on management and leadership, and this is the only one that ever brought, a, brought tears to his eyes. If you have found the top of the mountain to be isolated, cold, and a lonely place, then kindle the fire with joy. Start your journey by reading Chief Joy Officer. So I accepted the challenge to see if this management and leadership book could make me cry. For some reason, this challenge always gets me. Menlo Innovation's vision is tied to their mission, mission, purpose, culture, and their systems and processes. Their mission has always been to end human suffering in the world as it relates to technology. Their purpose and goals are to return very real human joy to technology. Pretty cool, huh? At Menlo Innovations, they have created an organization free from fear, where people bring their whole selves to work and apply the full range of their potential energy and talent. As Mr. Sheridan outlines in the book, the process can involve letting go of most of what you have learned and experienced at work. It can also involve changing what you believe about the people who work for you and with you. As I share in my YouTube video, do you have your summer books picked out yet? Richard Sheridan clearly describes a time in his life where work was not joyful and he dreaded coming into work and he would take the longest way into work to avoid getting there too early. He was burning out like so many are today. Then one day, when given an opportunity to be in charge, Richard set out to reverse all of the bureaucracy, politics, the blame game, and the days of the good ideas and suggestions getting squashed. He then takes you on a journey that first of all describes what joyful leaders are. Here's a tip. They are authentic, humble, loving, optimistic, visionary, grounded in reality, servant leaders, among other things. I have a personal story to share with you. I have shared many times about my two mountaintop work experiences, but now I have another type of story to share. I had a new boss say to me one day, you are such a mom manager. I was so excited by this. I thought based on our limited time spent together, they got it. They realized that I wanted to give my employees the tools, the inspiration, and the security to know that I had their backs. Guess what? They called me a mom manager as a put down. They told me that I needed to get tough with my team. I needed to set unrealistic goals so they'd become closer to reaching our goals and tell them it's my way or the highway. I soon discovered that my boss was a product of the system that they had come up in. And there was not gonna be any changing their minds. There has been and continues to be so much abuse and pain in the workplace. Why does it have to be this way? I decided shortly thereafter that it was going to have to be the highway for me. I knew I could not bully my team. I expected the team to come to work every day as scheduled, work together, and take care of our customers and visitors. And I would give them all the tools and support they needed to do their job. I'd like you to know that I have no problem getting tough 
or strict or whatever it is, but not over everyday routine items. I save it for when I really need to be that way. I feel that the true testament of my mom management was that it took them over nine months to fill my position. In the meantime, my team operated almost like a self-managed team because they knew what they were doing and they knew how to provide excellent customer service. I still get texts from them and I hear from them regularly. Guess what? Even on Mother's Day. Part two of this book shares how you can build a, a culture of joyful leadership. I will just discuss two of the seven outline principles in this book. The first one is to start with a purpose. I believe every employee should know the company's mission, vision, and values, or MVV. If the employee is not connected to the why the organization exists and who they serve, what are they doing at the company? Are they there just to collect a paycheck? I feel that it's senior leadership's job to instill into their employees the organization's mission, vision, and values. The employees should be quizzed on it regularly and it should just roll off the tips of their tongues. At Menlo Innovations, they care for the team. From Menlo's extreme interviewing, their pay transparency, giving truthful and feedback, consistent feedback to each other, and sometimes tough love. They show that they care for each member of the team. They avoid hero worship and learn things together daily. Eliminating the ego in organizations can be a difficult thing to do. People get promoted many times because they are good at their technical skills, when they really should be promoted based on their leadership abilities. Every person in the organization at Menlo gets the same bonuses. That's right, the receptionist gets the same bonus as the engineers, designers, and project managers, not the same percentage, because each person on the team is that important. Each team member understands the why behind the changes that take place in the organization, why each change connects the purpose of the organization. As the book shares, a team needs inspiration to get to optimism. Once they get it, they will move mountains or hoist helium balloons, an ardent commitment to a change they were led to believe in. When there is true transparency, it's easy to share the why. That is why Menlo Innovation's last software emergency was more than 15 years ago. I could go on and on about how much this book resonates with my mission, vision, and values. Yes, I believe each person, each family, each community should have a mission, vision, and value statement. In this section on learning together, they talk about how each team works to educate each other with the things they learn. The fact that Richard Sheridan mentions Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University that a team member brought to their team gives him many extra points from me. Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University changed my husband's and my life related to having a more secure financial future. Richard ends the book by sharing that leadership is a journey. However, the best news is that you can get back to the truest form of who you really are and what you believed you could become. I invite you to get this book today and begin reading it. Yes, go to a bookstore and get this book today. Please join Richard Sheridan and me in a webinar conversation on August 15th at noon Eastern time. You can register for the free webinar on the link below and please read the book beforehand. Again, for more inspiring, life-changing reviews, please click on the link below or the red subscribe button. Remember, nonfiction is sexy.